just decided I finished it and I thought, I just can't, I have to do something. I, it's far too cold. It's between minus 40 and minus 50 right now um, with the wind chill. So you cannot go outside. I, you know, all I wanted to do is go for a walk. And yesterday I decided I, I pulled out a sketch pad and a pencil and I started drawing and I haven't drawn for years and I used to draw all the time. And, and it was just a really nice way to break the day, but you could sort of let your brain go in a different direction. And yeah, it was nice. So, so I am, I'm, I'm cutting out time, cutting, you know, for myself and, you know, as I've, I've been going full throttle, but I, tomorrow I plan to take some time off and uh, in the middle of the day, even if it's an hour or two, cause they're, I think they're finally gonna open the gym in the building again. So I'm gonna go to the gym. Um, and then it's a long weekend. So I have three, three days of, um, you know, just doing, doing things for myself and, you know, trying to get out and about in this cold, cold, cold weather, but yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, but I did do, I did do some meditation on it. I listened to the, um, to the, the recording and one, you know, and I, and I know you, you know, and I've, I've said that, you know, this whole thing about where I live and blah, blah, blah. But I come to the yeah. conclusion that I just don't have enough information to make a decision mm -hmm. about that right now. Yeah. So I can park that one. Yeah. In my heart of hearts, I know I want to be in the water and I want to be taking photographs. Yeah. So Good. that's the main thing that you that you know that. And that you're consciously parking it, Cheryl. So, yeah. yeah. And whatever you need to do to keep that um, active, even if it is as simple as having something on a wall, just to remind you, you know, like the, the background that you've yeah. got that you're sharing with us, just yeah. keeping that vision always out there. Because yeah. whatever we're doing in our life, if we're not directly feeding our soul through our day-to-day -day work, we need to find another avenue to do that. Um, yeah. Because inevitably what will creep up otherwise is a feeling of um, well, um, boredom or dissatisfaction or or disillusionment, yeah. and we don't yeah. we don't want that. But you know the cause of that, so that's not going to happen to you so long as you stay vigilant on that. Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah, but so, I also I have one more input because I yes, did yeah, plan, oh. I did book my Easter weekend. I'm flying, COVID allowing us. We'll see what happens with the restrictions. But we booked into a, the same friend that uh, talked me into taking diving the first time. We're going to uh, Vancouver to do uh, dry suit certification and we're going into the water to look for a giant octopus Ooh. and I'm buying a new camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and also you had that realization too during the week after closing that one of those open cycles, getting those photos off, just how much you've learned in a relative short space of time. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. All right. I think uh, the pursuit of the giant octopus deserves a big round of applause and some energy. All right. So some soaring out energy. Are you ready, Cheryl? Are Absolutely. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Lots of warm energy to chilly Winnipeg mm. and, uh, and flowing towards your vision of capturing, um, I was going to say on film, in a camera. Yeah. <laughs> a wonderful octopus. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. Um, AJ, um, I'll just bring up these other two points. So, so the, the assignment, and we talked about this, getting clear on your vision, detoxifying fashion, defining what your number one goal is from that, and then a strategy. So do you want to share with us any progress that you've made between last week and this week, AJ? Yes, yeah, so I got clear on the vision. So it was, uh, you know, to, to create fashion that doesn't just des destroy or, you know, uh, ruin the planet and because a lot of the fashions that we wear these days have toxins in the fabrics etc etc so I've bought all the fabrics created the design so we're right now sampling <clears throat> wow <laughs> we have three names and some logos I've been playing with those so the most uh, important goal right now is to pick the name it'll be either because i like five to eight does it any everybody know what five to eight means five to eight hertz hc ah uh, tell us it's something about vibrations is it Frequency yeah. and vibration of love and and higher yeah. energy yeah, so yeah. i like that or it's two koi apparel so um got to choose that and the logos we've been playing with and the website 
But I realised also my heart of all hearts has the coaching and the yoga and and I had a realisation where I can fall back is where it's very different for me is going so much alone with the Zoom because I'm so used to doing retreats and being in big groups. So I had a very big aha moment. I think that was a thing that was maybe affecting me also. You know, um, I do go to my gym and I I connect with people every day and do yoga myself and my kundalini, but that was an aha thing that I was like, wow, yeah, that is something that has been affecting me to make this jump and I I really have to do it because I don't know how long that will be. But, yeah, it's interesting how I'm such a team and a group person. Yeah, exactly. You are. um... I wonder if you can do both, if one comes off the back of the others. I mean, five to eights are pretty interesting. I would say a, a lot of people wouldn't know what that meant. Uh, but if it's something like five to eight, the frequency of love or something, you know, if there's a tagline attached to it so, so people know, I wonder if you can do something off the back of that. Um, yes, yeah, you know, so into I would... teaching, you know, you, you have your five to eight uh, self-love program or something like that. Yeah, so I was that. That's what I'm thinking about because you know nutrition. I, I I know so much about that. So people can feed themselves, so they can think, so then they can love themselves. So there's a lot of other concepts. So I'm going to play with that and then get back to. But yeah, I still don't want to drop that out of my you know out of my vision because yeah. it's something that I really love to do. And it's soul purpose. So fashion is too, but you're right. If we're not doing anything that's soul driven or purpose driven, because I, I do really miss teaching yoga every day. I have to, I only have one or two clients with, you know, doing that every day and maybe five times a day. It's, I really miss it. And I was speaking, I'm in Ubud at the moment and I was talking to a teacher as well. He's in the same boat. We did a big ceremony last night for the, the new moon and the, the Chinese New Year, and I was like, well, it's, yeah, it's good to teach, talk to other teachers. Yeah. You know, a part of your brand, and this is for everyone, um, when whatever your project is, whether it's underwater photography or uh, teaching any type of um, program like you do, are you, which is all about deep diving, or if it's a fashion brand, um, there's the name of the product or the program, and then there's you. And a lot of people struggle with this. They go, oh, I don't want it to be about me. You know, I want it to be about the brand, whatever that is. But it is about you, and it's probably more about you than the brand. So images of you doing yoga as the face of a brand that's all about detoxifying the planet and, you know, getting into the vibration of love, 528, are absolutely relevant. You teaching is, is absolutely relevant. So capture those images because that's what people want to see um, more than a, 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 they're not going to so much be, be won over by your designs, no matter how good those designs are, they're going to be won over by what you stand for. And so if you're living your truth, Amanda, and sharing your wisdom with others as a teacher, that's very strong for your fashion brand, you know. So I, th- I, I see the two as very, you know, is there such a word as synergistic they're, or whatever? They're, they're that, you know, they're related. Hi, Bernadette. Sorry, I'm late. That's okay. We're just... Uh, we've been here for many years and a lady yeah. said that 15 years ago on, on the yoga floor. Amanda, you need to, you know, get your fashion out there because you are your brand and you wear it every day and, you know, they're, they're the light. So, yeah, yeah you might. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. just remember that. I've been wrapped over the knuckles for the first thing. I've said, do I really want to put a photo out there? Doesn't that mean I'm up myself? Um, so... To the, to the person who's watching, you know, actually, they want to see that you're, you're living what your brand represents. So if your brand represents love, you know, which means t- taking care and responsibility for the planet, for others, for the self, they want to see you demonstrating that. And so it's not about being, you know, oh, it's all about me. It's nothing to do with narcissism or anything like that. It's just you uh, demonstrating your brand values in action. Yeah, right. and I, I got over that because I thought being 50 and still doing everything that I do, I'm, I'm a leading example. I don't have to be up myself. I'm just an example of what I believe health is and longevity and sustaining a life, you know, in a healthy body that's not that's not toxic and, and, and acidic. 
Exactly. So think, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when someone puts on one of your garments, they're getting that. That's what they're wearing. They're wearing the much bigger picture. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, just keep building on that. Um, are you, how about you? Uh, since last week when we went through this work on uh, vision coming off the back of the law of separation, uh, what's come into place for you? Thank you, Janet. I'll try to speak, <laughs> see if you can hear me. <laughs> it's a lot better now. <clears throat> I lost my voice after the ritual yesterday. We did a plain sing and five elements ritual. And in the spiral, we are in the element of fire. And I want to release what's in the way in my power. And we did a big waterfall and screaming it's like, ah. Oh, God, it's so powerful to let go of that. <laughs> and then right after that, I like, oh, I cannot speak at all. But I'm glad now. I think it's okay. I have to hear my voice. <laughs> you can hear me. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we can we can hear you okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, I love what you shared about um, allowing ourselves to be seen and branding. And how much I actually, like, when I think about it, how much I actually would love to see Amanda James in all of her outfit and that she's proud mm. of it. And that, you know, that's her. And in that, her, for me, beauty is the number one value. I see it very beautiful when you're in your outfit and you're speaking and you're in your powers like, ah, oh, she's like completely allowing that and seeing her that and I'll be celebrating. And this is, you know, it's in you shining in your biggest power, which is, you know, a gift for the others to then, wow, shit, I want to wear a manager's outfit and I even more inspired maybe to do my own things, you know, <laughs> to wear, be proud of my own creation. And then I was reflecting this COVID when everything turns online and we wanted to be seen and we wanted other people to see see us because this is the whole world right now and that thin balance between when i see other people making photos just for the sake of instagram ish and then in the interaction i was mourning to see that you would do everything to take photos and you're forgetting the connections and you and then you're forgetting the moment and you're forgetting like that we're actually doing what we're doing coming from the place of connection to self. And, and then I was like reflecting on clearing what, what is it that I'm not okay with if I'm going to be allowing myself to be seen and also taking the time, this freaking take a lot of time to build your existence online and taking photos like, shit, I just want to do my work and doing this photo shoot or you know, taking this moment, this is going to be, I'm spending this time with people and honoring that how much am I allowing myself to take photos and what actually is it am I doing? What am I doing right now? And how am I honoring the time and the space and the work? And it's like, whoa, that's a lot of things happening now and a lot of things that is required from us. And how can we stay in this place of integrity on doing our work and doing our work for us and doing our work with the people around us and our family also when we have children <laughs> around us and time spent with family and the fact that we are doing online work it even consume more time and as i was yesterday spending i had three ladies joining my rituals and they're all our coaches also and like oh how do they get 100 likes on their instagram and then oh how do i not get worried about that then you know giving from the place of giving is like being smart of course knowing how to present ourselves but not being bogged down of how much people see us <laughs> yeah, yeah it's really coming down to why what what do i why am i doing what i'm doing like how do i stay integrity to this moment this present moment and the low separation really mm. really bogged down to that uh yeah even in my vision this is going even deeper. Why this? What? Why? What the freaking hell? What am I doing? What am I doing? So it's like, yeah, I love how, how, how deep, like how many layers and how deeper we can go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Clearing my expression, really. 
and my expression is more about why, why even we are so busy. <laughs> So thank are you, you much. yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. So um, it's, it can be, uh, you know, frustrating. I think social media presents us with so many challenges uh, on so many levels, but in terms of using it to market ourselves, it's very easy to get into comparison mode, isn't it? And how important is Instagram? Who's my market and all of that. And we do need to get some clarity on what's the right platform. Um, so I'm playing around with Instagram at the moment, but I must say my heart's not in Instagram and it's probably, I probably don't need to be on Instagram really because my age group is more like around, the people I work with are typically more around 45 plus. Um, so it, then it's knowing to let go of that. But th there's also another aspect of this, which is really important. And, and this is more in the line of uh, having trust or faith. We're gonna talk about this more in a sec. When you have faith in yourself, you stick to the vision regardless. So remember in that law of separation, it was, say, it was, okay, once you are clear on your vision, hold it firm. Don't question the vision because it's likely not to be the, if the vision comes from you and it's heartfelt, it's likely that if you're having struggles, it's not the vision. Um, and it's probably not the goal. What it's more likely to be is just the how-to, how you're executing so just remembering how important it is to stay in integrity with your brand, living your brand, showing that up on Facebook or wherever the platform is, um, but also remembering that an increasingly important way of growing your business going forward is going to be through referral. Because in this era where it's so difficult to trust people, um, and they've done business surveys on this, the number one way that most CEOs, for instance, uh, find a supplier or a consultant or a program, they just ask a friend. And this is now becoming a business. So I spoke to someone the other day and he's a great networker. His background is in accountancy, but he's, he, he said to himself about six months ago, could I monetize being a good networker? And that's precisely what he's doing. So he's like, he calls himself a matchmaker. So he'll find, you know, someone like you, are you, if you were, this is someone in the US, right? But uh, this might be someone in a different context. I'll find someone like you and they'll go, you know, this person is really good at what she does. She can take you to a deep place that so many of these other charlatans say they can and they don't. Um, you, you might not have even heard of her, but I'm going to put her in contact with you. And that's what they do on the basis that they can trust you. They have to be able to trust you. And so I think that trust um, it, in terms of keeping that constant presence on social media is important, you know, that you, that you are consistent, but you're showing up as you, not trying to be someone else. But that's how I think a large amount of business will be done in the future. And someone like that, how they work is they charge a 20% commission. So that's pretty par for course. And, um, uh, and you know, they, the, the, their credibility relies totally on being able to trust the people that they are referring because uh, they can't, you know, they can't let their, their network down. So just understand also that there are other ways that you can grow your business apart from, you know, um, directly through social media. Does that all make sense? Yeah, really makes sense. Yeah. It? yeah. So just stay on course, are you? <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and, uh, but, but do look at other avenues too. Um, build relationships. I spend probably a third of my time building relationships because that's where I see the value. And every time I talk to someone, they'll say, you should talk to so-and-so. So that's very important. Um, all right, Bernadette, over to you. Just, uh, this is just uh, leaving off where we were last week. Uh, uh -huh. what's, what's transpired for you since uh, we spoke? Because you were, you were uh, clear on your vision, clear on your goal. How's it been going in the, the week since we last got together? Good. Good. It has been going well. And uh, last week I was getting over COVID and I found myself um, like glad that I got through it and, and didn't have a lot of problems. But then after it was done, I had just finished sending out my boxes for this month and for Valentine's day. And I felt like I crashed, like absolutely crashed. You know, I just didn't, didn't want to think about it. Didn't want to do anything with it. And I actually got worried because I thought, why am I like this? I, I'm usually excited about it and, and into it, but I think I just needed a break. I just needed a couple of days to not think about it. I took my ads down from Facebook because I was, I've been running tests to see just like about social media to see what 
um, people respond to in terms of the ads. And it's been driving me crazy because I can't, I can't see a pattern. So, and I felt like I was spending a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of energy trying to figure it out. And I thought to myself, why am I doing that? I'm happy with the number that I have right now. I have good balance. I can keep my, you know, responsibilities at my other job and my family. Why am I so anxious to get to this number that I made up in my head of how many boxes I should sell? And I have the rest of my life to do it. So it's not like the market is ever going to go away. There will always be teenage girls with low self-esteem, unfortunately. So um, I just took a break and I feel so much better about it now. And the boxes are, are getting to people's houses now. So they're tagging and posting and and I feel re-energized about it. So it was definitely um, law of separation yeah. <laughs> just happened naturally <laughs> for me for just yeah. a couple of days. And now I'm back on track. Oh, that's mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For sharing I just it. needed it. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't feel guilty about it. I just took uh -huh. a break and, and needed to, you know. Yeah. Hey, I good. just and I just realized I was thinking, oh, we've got to send you some energy, but we haven't sent IU energy and we haven't sent AJ energy. So let's just uh, do a little yeah. bit of a, a, a reversal. Everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, firstly, to, to Amanda Jane, just for taking action on the fashion front yeah. and also starting to build that bridge. So you can do both, Amanda Jane, because that is you. <laughs> And this brand yeah. is all about you being used. All right, so on the count of three, everyone, one, two, three, lots of uh, five, two, eight vibrational energy to Amanda Jane. There we go. Oh, I can feel it going going through. Mm -hmm. Going through my, my laptop, landing <laughs> Farley. <laughs> I think uh, five, two, eight's an interesting name. I think people, if they don't know, they'll ask about it, but it'll quickly get known. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well done. And um, and are you, uh, for you just, because I know how uh, all the battles that you face, um, you know, uh, financial, you know, making ends meet, all of that, and just staying the course. And again, just you being you. Th this is the ultimate strategy. You know, when we talk about what's the best strategy, well, it's how can I be more of myself? And how can I be confident in that space? Because people buy confidence. So that's what it's all about. So we're going to send you some warm energy. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Yeah, rubbing hands. Cheryl's doing it. <laughs> and here's to you. Lots of warm energy to you, IU, and also healing your bruised vocal cords. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and Bernadette, to you for putting in, in, into action the law of separation, just like that, going, yeah, mm -hmm. well, yeah. this is rubbish. <laughs> I'm going to take a break. <laughs> so, um, yeah, very good. All right, you ready? On the count of three, one, two, three, and lots of he healing energy. Too. Thank you. Really <laughs> helping you get over Thank you. a pretty physically challenging yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Thank right. you. Okay. So, uh, oh, what are we going to learn about today? Do you get curious about these laws? You go, oh, I wonder what mm -hmm. we're going to learn. What's this one all about? And, and you might get a sense that there's a bit of uh, a sequence uh, to this too. So although in theory, you could kind of jump in at any point and learn these, I get a feeling that one's building off the back of the other as well. So uh, looking at uh, what we've done so far. So uh, looking back on our tracks, the law of exchange, um, I won't go through each one each time, but just to, as a reminder of where we've been, the law of exchange, the law of the architect. Um, so that's all, always um, speaks to the vision and being clear on the vision and, and being the holder of the vision and then how to roll that out. The law of open cycles. Um, we're going to kind of speak to this law of open cycles in what we're doing today, actually. Um, it's interesting that the overlap the principle of present, uh, uh, fast forwarding to the future and then staying very present in terms of the execution of what we're doing. And then last week, the law of separation. So what's, what's today all about? Well, today, what we're going to look at are the two enemies of success. Would, does anyone want to have a go just entering in the chat what you think uh, one of the enemies of success might be? There's so many different theories on this. Uh, and uh, some people's theories are, are, are relevant. What's interesting is, um, and maybe just um, bring this back to your own life where you might have not been successful in a particular way. You know, what was that about? What, what do you feel caused you not to get what you wanted at that particular moment? 
Um, there's no, yeah, absolutely imposter syndrome. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no right or wrong answer. And whatever, whatever you put in the chat will somehow sheet back to what we're going to learn about today. Yeah, no action, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, these, these laws, it's interesting. You know, we think about law as being constitutional law, you know, laws to, you know, don't drink and drive, uh, you know, don't, don't uh, kill your neighbour. Um, these are to keep a society civilized, but uh, the laws we're talking about here are more like metaphysical laws. In other words, they have a, a feeling of truth about them that actually comes from within us. They're not laws that are applied from the outside that we have to abide by. So what we're tapping into here is our inner knowing. And in, in hindsight, they always kind of feel obvious. Yeah, so fear of failure or success, self-doubt, standing in your own way or procrastination, yes. So. What, um, what we're going to learn about, and, and all of these things are in a way symptomatic of something else. Um, and what this law does is drill it down to two factors in particular. And it's interesting because these two factors kind of have a, um, a behavior bias too. Um, you know, in, when we studied our behavior types, uh, when we were looking at the DISC profile, they, they tend to speak to that as well. Um, so they're almost predictable in a way. So uh, this week's law is the law of hindrance. So we're going to look at the two things that hinder us on our path. So the question we have to ask is, why do so many of us not live up to our true potential? Why do we box ourselves in, stay small? And, you know, when given the opportunity to expand, we uh, pull away from it. What is that about? Why do we um, some, somehow shoot ourselves in the foot? Uh, and we can even do that consciously. So what this law teaches us is what is the root cause of the conditions that cause us to fail? So some of the things you put in the, uh, the, the chat there, um, you know, are you saying, yeah, not taking action? That's a condition that causes us to fail. Any kind of uh, behavior that might not serve us, uh, and we'll go into some examples of that in a moment that cause us to fail. So the root cause and then understanding how we can pinpoint the key to solving them. All right, so we get some clarity. Okay, so most things can be traced back to one of two root causes. And here they are. The two things are lack of trust and lack of discipline. Now, does anyone here relate to either of those two things or maybe both? Just enter in the chat if you feel you've got a tendency towards either of those two and which of those two you feel it is. Lack of trust, lack of discipline, or you could say neither, um, or you could say both. So AJ, more about trust, that's interesting. Uh, for me, it's discipline. I know, I know that about myself. Which one do you feel is the biggest player in your life? Um, Bernadette's thinking both, but in different areas. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's interesting how they, they play out. Um, shell discipline sometimes, right? Okay. Are you, what about you? Trust. All right. That's interesting. Okay. So um, sometimes... Everyone, I think, suffers from lack of discipline, lack of trust uh, to some degree. Um, so this isn't really, you know, an either or situation. But there tends to be a bit of a correlation between our behaviour type and then uh, where we tend to let ourselves down, which is quite interesting. So do you remember when we did the DISC profile? Uh, there were the four profiles. Does anyone remember what the four, four profiles were? The first one was driver. Do you want to enter in the chat what you can remember? There were three other profiles. And most of us are a combination of two. Yeah, that's right. Influencer, Bernadette, you got it. Uh, anyone remember the, the other two? Driver, influencer. So disc, so they would start with S and C. You, you usually remember who you are, but you don't remember the others. 
So I'll just I'll just keep going. Uh, so we've got driver, influencer. It was well, they've got a social aspect to them. It's supporter and conscientious. So I'm just uh, trying to remember everyone in this room. I think uh, Cheryl, you were you were DC, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, you're DC. Um, I use pretty much an I. Yeah, you're a high I. Uh, Bernadette, I think you're an ID, aren't you? ID or DI? I uh, uh, from memory. And Amanda Jane, I, I don't know. If I know I. Yeah. I can't remember. I know I, yeah. but I can't remember what yeah. the second one. Maybe D. Oh, I think it is. I, think I was it is. a D on. Yeah. Right. So. And that tends to be fairly common among people who there, there are patterns and among people who who are say in the coaching area, for instance, are usually um, high I and maybe something else, I and ID. So um, so which one do you think would would apply? Which which type of behavior type do you think might be challenged more by a lack of discipline of so you've got the on the right hand side, you've got the the influences and the supporters are people oriented um, by nature, and then the drivers and, con and those who are conscientious are more task oriented. So the task oriented people tend to be more analytical. They think things through more. Uh, the, the guys on the right hand side uh, tend to be more impulsive. Um, yeah, just uh, going by gut feel and uh, being, and yeah, just, uh, well, I won't say it or I'll give it away, but they're, um, uh, yeah, you're a driver and influencer, Amanda Jane. Yeah, so, and some of you are, are both. So you're both task and your people. So, but who do you think, which of the, of the two categories, whether you're, and, and also there's a, there's a bit of a correlation between uh, extroversion and being introspective. So the drivers and conscientious types tend to be more introspective and then uh, the others tend to be more uh, gregarious as well. So if we were looking at the people who are more gregarious, for instance, where do you think uh, their lack might be? Would it be in trust or discipline? What do you feel? You can just enter it in the chat. Discipline, yeah. That tends to be the tendon, that tends to be the, the pattern that we see. So the people who are naturally people oriented, in other words, they don't tend to have such uh, trust issues so much. Um, it's more about discipline. Yeah. And so that's right, AJ. So what about those who are more analytical? Uh, again, I'm just saying these are tendencies. Would theirs be trust or discipline? And yeah, that's right. It tends to be more on the trust side. Yeah, that's not always, and it might not apply to you. It's just that it's interesting to kind of sheet it back. Why is it interesting to sheet it back? I, I like doing this because then I think, uh, oh, it's not so much because I'm flawed in some way, but it, that's just the nature of who I am. So I, um, I struggle with discipline in some areas, absolutely. All right, so, so what does that mean? What do we do with that? Oh, this uh, chart, uh, yeah, just uh, spells it out a little bit more. So does anyone here suffer from money issues? I'm putting my hand up. Yeah, are you? Yeah, AJ? Okay, so which of those two lacks do you think uh, would cause money issues, lack of discipline or lack of trust? I mean, they both could, but which one do you think would tend to be? the yeah, discipline, yeah, absolutely. And what's interesting is you can be disciplined in one area and not disciplined in another area. So for instance, um, I'm disciplined with my morning routine. If, if, even if it's five o'clock, I always do a 10 minute workout without fail. I just don't think about it, I just do it. Whereas someone else might really struggle with that. But someone else might be very good at keeping account of all their finances. Whereas that's where I, I fall down. So I know very well where I need to be focusing my energy. Um, and sometimes that can be because of some underlying trauma as well. So it's not just uh, related to our behavior 
um, uh, behavior profiles. Um, but what we need to do is if, if we are uh, undisciplined in some area, we need to actually uh, look at that and recognize it because it, it kind of speaks back to the law of open cycles. Um, I know myself, if, uh, if I can't say straight away, oh, my monthly expenses are blah, blah, that puts a pit in my stomach. I go, oh, God, I really should know that. I've got to be clear on that. You know, so it feels like an unresolved issue. And when we have an unresolved issue like that, it's always going to leak energy away from us. So it makes good sense as to why we should be, you know, starting to address these aspects. So, yeah, so the form of lack that's showing up there, lack of discipline. Most people are disciplined in some areas, but not others. So let's look at that. Let's look at, is lack of discipline showing up for you? So if it's not, this question doesn't apply. But if it is, where have you noticed that it's showing up in your life? Is it to do with, uh, and, and it, just feel free to enter in the chat, is it to do with uh, money issues? Is it to do with having said, you know, a daily routine? Is it to do with uh, diet, uh, personal habits? Uh, is it to do with wasting time on social media? Yeah, so Bernadette, diet and exercise. Right, okay, that's good. Good to be clear on that. Anyone else? So if I was putting, if I was filling this in the chat, I would say uh, financial management. You can get distracted by people, yeah, and social media, yeah, okay. And I use finance management. So the thing is, what's interesting is that there are no end of tools to talk about, you know, how to manage your finances. There are so many apps out there about how to do it. So what we have, to, and there are a lot of free ones as well. So it's not because the information's not out there. there. It's not because there aren't the people who can show us how to do this. It's for some reason we've just chosen to keep that as a black hole in our life. And the problem with that is if we continue to do that, we're going to continue to struggle in that area. Now, I always used to think that um, in a kind of reckless way, yeah, but if we're making enough money, it doesn't matter. The costs will look after themselves. But that's such a false theory because you only have to think about, you know, you hear these stories about people who, who scrub floors for a living. However, they're so careful with their spending and so careful with, you know, the money coming in and money going out and making sure that, you know, that it's, it always falls on the right side of the ledger, that someone in that position could have a better uh, chance of ending up wealthy if they're really focused on this, then someone like me, for instance, who could make 10 times their income, but not do the, not treat the money with the respect it deserves. So, and the same applies to any area where there's a lack of discipline. You know, if, if it's in the, if, if it's to do with what you're eating or your uh, health, you know, uh, just think about how that might be costing you in terms of your energy levels, for instance. So everything has a consequence and what I tend, what I've tended to do is play down the consequence, you know, just sweep it under the rug. But I think we do that at our peril. Yeah, so Cheryl, you're saying diet, fitness routine. Yeah. Uh, and consumerism, all right now, I think it's due to the current situation. So meaning desire to spend, to, to buy things. Yeah, yeah. So becoming aware of this um, is really important. So, uh, and what we need to do is just look at what this lack of discipline is uh, costing you. So, um, and you might want to uh, just enter this in the chat too, or write it down on a piece of paper, whichever is easier. Just take a moment to think about um, the specific pinpoint, the area of discipline in your life that's, um, that's lacking. Uh, AJ overspending, not keeping a ledger. Yeah, that's right. Um, think about how, what that cost is and just write down whatever comes up for you. Um, and let's just take a couple of minutes for that. And I'm going to work on this as well. So pinpoint the area of lack of discipline and just write down where you feel or how that's costing you in terms of, uh, might be uh, in terms of how your enjoyment of life, quality of life, ability to do things, energy levels, um, 
uh, capacity to plan. <laughs> so just write down a list, see if you can come up with 10 ways that it might be costing you. And we'll give ourselves a couple of minutes to do this. I'm just going to pause the, or oh, um, uh, Ben, could you pause the, I'll pause the recording. Yeah, so, um, but then as you know my story, I had that terrible trauma of 2008 um, and I'm still working my way through that. But this has really changed my thinking about it because um, there is something uh, that is also, I think, behaviour related to that in, encourages a certain kind of laissez-faire recklessness. It's like, oh, it'll be fine. So long as there's money coming in, everything else will look after themselves. So here's what I came up with. Um, uh, yeah, so, so the lack of discipline in financial management, um, this is what it's costing me. Yeah, so it compromises my ability to plan. Um, you know, we're currently looking at buying a place and um, over here and it's, you know, uh, knowing to be, whether we can afford it or not is difficult, which creates a lack of confidence. That in turn creates an anxiety about the future. Uh, that creates trust issues with my partner. And then also that can affect the level of joy I feel when I'm making money because I'm starting to see money as this grey thing, uh, not building up an investment, being a poor example for my children, uh, le a lack of legacy, financial legacy, because uh, that is important, uh, reduction therefore in energy and confidence and lack of sense of achievement. So that's my list. Does, was anyone's list similar to that? Did it, did it throw up similar things? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, the good news is when we're aware of this, um, what we realize is it's not actually as bad as it looks, right? The, the hard part is actually facing up to it. So these are just some of the symptoms that, that, uh, we, that can happen through uh, lack of discipline in an area, because it's almost like we can be working, we can be achieving in some areas, but because we're letting ourselves down in another area, which is inevitably is an important area, you know, whether it's our financial health, our physical health, our emotional health, it is an important uh, area. And it is probably, you know, going back to that law of open cycles. Um, it's, you know, and we talked about the three levels of open cycles with number one being like an email not answered. This is kind of a, at the number three level. Um, that's why it's important that we look at this. So yeah, it can leave you feeling empty inside. Um, you can, it can affect your optimism, optimism levels, you know, your outlook for the future. Uh, it can start to compromise, you know, taint your, your, where you are successful. It can cause us to trepidate about the future. Uh, and when we're trepidating about the future, that's taking us back into a fear state, which is kind of ridiculous. When you think of all the work that we've done on ourselves to go back to that state when it's not necessary. But the problem is when we do that, it's very easy for us to go from being in a state of being proactive to reactive, okay? And we don't, we don't wanna do that. And then finally, and this is what um, Ayu was saying before, yeah, you get into analysis paralysis, you know, you start thinking about it and judging yourself and becoming self-critical, losing confidence and then not taking action. Okay, so, and all of that, because uh, we haven't addressed something that actually is very, very solvable. So knowing, uh, whenever we make a decision about something, we have to know the consequences of not taking action. That's really important because then we can say, okay, I choose to have an empty void inside. I choose to lose my optimism and so on. We have to do, uh, we have to do this consciously um, and be aware of what we're doing. So the question is uh, what to do. If there is an area in your life where you feel there's a lack of discipline, what are we going to do about it? Are we, are we just going to talk about it? So the key is to actually master a new habit. And this might feel really uh, strange because um, I, for one, have always had accountants and bookkeepers to look after my affairs. Um, and that has actually created a bad habit for me because it's taken control of what is a very important aspect of life out of my hands. And I've just allowed that to be. So. Uh, so what could you do? What could be a habit that you uh, started to build 
that would cure this lack of discipline. By the way, does anyone know how long it takes to form a new habit? Just enter in the chat if you know how, how long it takes to form a new habit. There are a few different theories on this. I'm going with the more conservative one. Yeah, Amanda, Amanda Jane says 28 days. Yeah, Bernadette, 21 days. Yeah, I've heard of 21 days. Um, 40 days. Yeah, according to this law, it's 66 days. So it's actually a little bit longer. But even on that basis, if you say it's just a bit over three months, right, let's take the conservative approach that that's how long it takes. Um, you know, if there were, say, three, four, or even five areas in your life which needed a change of habit, you could effectively create those new habits within a year and your whole life would turn around. But even if it was just one habit that you changed, just one habit, uh, it's going to have a huge effect, not just materially, I, but I believe also psychologically, because what's happening is we're, we're in a way we're defeating the last demon. You've done so much work already. You've, you've brought so many things to the surface, but there's still this lingering thing out there. Um, and to be able to actually conquer that and go, you know what, I'm not going to let that be that lingering open cycle anymore. I'm actually going to do something about that. So if you're aware of where you might need to, what, why, where this lack of discipline might be affecting your life, just put in the chat, uh, what kind of new habit do you think you could engage with to address that? Uh, so for me, what it, um, and this is very out of character um, because I'm not a detail person, but it's actually taking the time to enter what I spend in uh, some sort of you know, ledger. Um, probably a nap. So I'm just researching that at the moment. And to be consistent in doing that, because you know what, I'm probably talking about 10 or 20 minutes max a day, it wouldn't be more than that. So what could be a new habit that you could start to address this lack of discipline? If it's, if it's uh, social media, if it's, uh, you know, uh, you could possibly assign times every day where you do social media and you stick to that. You don't go beyond that. Bernadette planning better for daily meals. Yeah. So eating more consciously. Um, yeah. Avoiding Amazon. So And in that planning better for daily meals too, just um, looking at the types of food that work for you too. You know, I know uh, a lot of people who I'm not a great fan of diets or anything like that, but I know a lot of people who are cutting carbohydrates, you know, like the empty ones like bread and rice out and it's making a big difference to their energy levels. So just eating more consciously. Um, AJ, going back to doing a daily budget ledger. Yeah. Saying no to people when I have commitments. Excellent. And are you, how about you? What, what do you, what daily habits or habit do you think? For now, just, uh, it's probably just to, to stick to one habit and really, and as a group, we can hold ourselves accountable. That's the other thing. There's something about uh, stating publicly what you're going to do that's helpful. Okay. So, um, This was helpful for everyone. Celery juice every morning. <laughs> would, yeah. So, yeah. Are you one? Thanks for that, AJ. One one hour on weekly reflection dedicated to finance, evaluation, money, work. Yeah, that's right. That's what might be more realistic. You know, for some people, doing something every day might not be realistic. Uh, but you know, for others, it might be just setting one day a month aside just to bring everything together. And with any surplus money, putting those into some kind of investment and knowing where you're putting that, that money, for instance. But just doing that, um, imagine what that would feel like, how that would change, you know, uh, readdressing what you're, you know, what you're eating, what your diet is. How would that make you feel? How would that make those around you feel? What would that say to them about the level that you care? You know, it, it's, uh, it also affects our relationships. I know if my husband and I are going to argue about anything, it will be money. It's always the same thing. So, uh, so just think about how uh, any change like this uh, not only improves your situation, but also others as well. 
So that was lack of discipline. Now let's look at lack of trust. Um, just put yes or no in the chat if you think lack of trust is an issue for you or has been an issue for you in your life. So when we say lack of trust, we're talking about uh, relationships. So it could be relationships with you know, our partners, um, relationships with people at work, um, relationships with uh, any, anyone that we encounter. So Bernadette saying yes. And so, Bernadette, I think you've got a bit of driver in your profile as well. So that kind of fits with that. Um, that I know, um, and I don't, I don't want to, I, I don't want to sound like I'm over generalizing, but I know with the driver tray, um, there's a what can very easily happen is a sense of, you know, what it's just easier if I do this myself. Do you ever feel that? And <laughs> because there's a lack of tolerance for other people making mistakes or taking too long. Um, and uh, yeah, it's control, exactly. It's the same old thing, exactly. And so do know that partly that's driven from experience, but partly it's also your behavior type too. So you'll have a natural tendency to do that in the same way I'll have a natural tendency towards you know, lack of discipline. Um, but it's really just being aware of this. But you know, a good example of, of how lack of trust can play out in the business context would be say, the business owner who uh, starts getting frustrated with it. he's got a salesperson and the salesperson isn't getting the sales and he gets frustrated. And rather than looking at the system, for instance, he'll just go, oh, he's just hopeless. He's no good at his job. Very rarely, this is something I've learned the hard way, very rarely is a problem in business a problem about a person. It's usually a problem about system that the systems are, are flawed in some way. Because if you've got a good system uh, that really is good, whether it's a selling process or you know, a financial admin process, whatever it is, uh, it, will be, it will outperform any lack in the person. Uh, but if you don't have a proper system, usually uh, someone, no matter how good they are, is going to really struggle and they're always going to be feeling a little bit stressed. But anyway, so in this, in this you know, business context, so you've got the business owner, his salesperson isn't performing. So he says, oh, what the hell? I'm just going to do it myself. And so he fires that guy and he starts doing sales himself. And then he, then he, he, he starts to question his financial manager and says, you know what? I'm not getting my reports on time. Listen, I actually think this would be easier if I just did this myself. He lets his financial person go. And it even gets to the point where uh, he walks into the office and there's dust on the counters and he's going, my God, our cleaners aren't doing their job. And next thing, before he knows it, he's coming into the office before everyone else, uh, leaving at the end of the day after everyone else, having given himself all this extra work. And this is where a lot of business owners end up. And I know my, my husband, who's what I call a nosebleed driver, um, when he got a job as a creative director, he was only 21, and I think he was probably not quite old enough or experienced enough for the position. But the first thing he did, he moved to Perth to this advertising agency and he fired everyone. And then he went, oh, no, my God, now I've got to do all the work myself. Um, and uh, he quickly got exhausted. So this can be a natural behaviour tendency. It can also be uh, uh, something else, you know, that's, that's deeper beneath our surface that we have to be aware of. But the first job is just to understand uh, what that's costing you. So, uh, so lack of trust uh, could also be a lack of trust in ourself. That's, that's the other thing. So while we might think it's because we can't trust others, the question to ask ourselves, is it actually more because I can't trust myself? And uh, typically that's if we're going to go a little bit deeper that's how it shows up. So if that's the case, just think, all right, where is that lack of trust coming from? What could I do to rebuild that lack of trust? So what are some ways to rebuild uh, trust in ourselves? Just, just enter in the chat if you have any ideas about that. What are some ways to rebuild trust in ourselves? Yeah, and AJ's just saying you end up doing everything and overwhelm comes up. Yeah, because I think you've got a bit of both, AJ. You've got a bit of driver and influencer. So trust and discipline could come up as issues for you. And that's very common. Yeah. Yeah, Cheryl, exactly. Get it setting a small goal and achieving it. Yeah. 
tracking your progress. Exactly. Yeah. So, so building that trust muscle. One of the things that happens uh, when we get in a position where we've kind of lost trust with others and we go, oh, I'll just do it all myself, um, it's very easy to get defensive. And, you know, someone says, oh, how are you going? Oh, I'm great. <laughs> Almost like that. Don't ask any more questions. So one of the best ways to build trust in ourself um, is, and if you've done my, uh, AJ saying make a plan and do it. Yes, absolutely. Setting daily tasks. Yeah. Um, one of the most, uh, one of the quickest and easiest ways, and not necessarily, well, no, not necessarily the easiest way, but one way uh, to build uh, trust. Oh, hang on. I'll just go back a little bit. I've jumped, I've jumped ahead. Well, so we'll just hold that thought. Um, yeah, so how could lack of trust affect your business or personal life? So just thinking about that for a moment. How could lack of trust affect your business or personal life. So let's just take, how are we going for time? Yeah, we've got time. Let's just take a couple of minutes and just write down how that could be affecting either your business or personal life. Uh, we know that, you know, lack of trust in, in our personal life, if we don't, if we're not fully trusting of that person that we're with, we can't really love them 100%. So think about what the consequence of that is, how that affects them, how that affects you. I just noticed yeah, where lack of trust is showing up and how that's affecting um, the various aspects of your life. Could even be affecting your health. Wow, this one is huge. <laughs> Shit. Is it? Shit. <laughs> Shit. Well, at least you're seeing it, are you? <laughs> and even just by writing it down, you're starting to create distance between you and it. Yeah. Um, feel sh feel free to share in the chat uh, the uh, the scariest consequence because sometimes it's good just to put it out there so you can really face it. For me, it was uh, probably actually isolation. Just because uh, I, I think that's mm -hmm. for me that's where that's where it all came to at the end. Just isolation because you end up doing everything on, on your own and uh, feeling very alone and disconnected. Yeah, exhaustion, Bernadette, yeah. I hear that a lot too. I, and I think that's what happens. Um, you just burn out because you can't do it all. Um, you're not knowing and experiencing your wholeness exactly. Yeah, confidence, confidence gone, regret, tired, isolation. You know what, to be successful in any endeavor, you know, and think of, you know, your lives going forward and the work that you know you most enjoy. The only way that's going to be successful is through trust. You have to build a team. You have to have people that you can rely on. You cannot do it all yourself. And otherwise, you're just swapping one uh, state of exhaustion for another. And that's probably what your, your body was telling you the other day, Bernadette. It was just saying, shut up for a couple of days because you need a rest. Um, and so it's probably also saying, question, question the trust issue and go, okay, at some point, I'm going to have to let go and but that doesn't mean being reckless and just, you know, trusting people without them having earned that trust. They have to earn that trust. But it's about being careful and then being okay with, you know, whatever they deliver. It might be 80% of, what, of how you would do it, but sometimes that's okay. That's just good enough to, to walk away from that 80%, go, 
that's fine. I probably could have done it better myself, but I'm just going to um, make sure, however, that you've got the processes in place so it's not a system issue. Um, but just remembering that normally it's a system issue. Just about any system can solve a, a, a person issue, a people issue. So, um, and, and so if things do go wrong, rather than questioning the person, go, okay, what's this telling me about the system? Remember the law of separation to be able to stand back and go, okay, so we need to tweak this, we need to tweak that, rather than go into default of, oh, they're hopeless, I'll do it myself. Okay, so yeah, this is, this is the, the, the sad truth that most business owners, oops, most business owners who lack trust end up building a job. That's all they're doing. So they're not actually creating something that is scalable that ends up making them income. You wanna have a business that you can walk away from that other people are running for you. You, you hold the vision, you're always holding the vision but other people are doing all the, you know, um, the hard work, the heavy lifting. You're just doing the, the things that you enjoy. That's the, that's the goal. So that means building up trust. All right, yeah, so to do this, uh, we need to peel away some layers um, and this applies to lack of discipline as well. So if there's a lack of discipline in a particular area of your life, which seems to be the case for all of us, we have to go, okay, what's beneath that? What's, uh, why do I have this uh, issue with money, for instance? You know, so, so I have to um, really go into myself to look at that. And sometimes you know, it's, it's a matter of doing whatever uh, is required uh, to get to the bottom of that. So for instance, I'll do, sometimes I'll, oh, well, I'm doing deep work with IU at the moment, which has been great. She's got this wonderful program, I'm giving you a free plug, IU. Um, but she, she kind of takes off where the fifth door leaves off in terms of uh, going deep into, as you know, we have emotions and are not just stored in our mind, they're stored in our body. So uh, uh, bringing those emotions up out of our body. Um, so see this kind of work. The, the best investment that you can make is to invest in yourself. So if you see that you have ongoing, ongoing issues in some area of your life around trust or discipline, pinpoint what those areas are. So for me, it's financial management. I'm very clear on that. And, you know, what the natural tendency for people to do is to get a coach. They'll go, oh, I'll get a financial coach or I'll get a fitness coach or I'll get a nutrition coach. Um, a good coach will say, well, yeah, sure, I can show you ways to, to manage your life in this area, but you also need to address what's beneath the surface, what's created that issue in the first place. Is that, all, is that clear? So it's about uh, looking over your life, identifying the areas. Everyone in this room has made huge progress. So we're talking now about refinement, really, but also it's looking at fatal flaws because it would be crazy to go all this way, but if there's a fatal flaw in there somewhere to just brush over it. So this is your opportunity to, with this overview, this macro perspective of your life, now drill down to those you know, pinpoint areas that are issues that could, if you don't address them, could undermine your success and then go, okay, how do I solve that particular issue and what could be operating beneath the surface? You know, so for instance, there's a story of a guy who was a very um, famous Hollywood actor, uh, but he had a heroin habit. And so he went to, um, see his doctor and said, you know, I've got this addiction and I realize I have to do something about it because it's really costing me my career. And uh, the doctor said, well, actually, you don't really have a, an addiction problem, really. And the guy said, well, yes, I do. And he said, well, that's, yeah, that's the symptom, but that's not the problem. Uh, and so the doctor suggested this fellow go and talk to, um, you know, a therapist and the therapist um, uh, identified that he had a problem with depression. And so then they identified, uh, having identified depression, they then came up with a, um, a program to get him through his depression and find out what was at the root cause of that. Um, and so the, the, the end of the story is by addressing the, what was beneath uh, this addiction, which looked like, you know, lack of discipline, going beneath that, uh, he was able to uh, resolve his addiction to heroin and the depression and now he's back as one of Hollywood's very successful actors at the age of 50. 
So, but that just came from taking a look, uh, having the honesty to drill down below the surface and, and address the root cause of that problem. So, yeah, so lack of trust could be a lack of trust in ourself. And what is the key to creating trust? So, um, so previously we were looking at that and talking about, yeah, taking action um, and they are all great measures. But if we want to get, you know, like the onion, peel away some of the layers, if we want to do some radical personal transformation, the key to creating trust is to be able to allow ourselves to be, what word am I thinking of? Taha. Vulnerable. We have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. If you want to really fast track building trust, instead of uh, when, when someone says to you, how are you going? And you say, oh, great. And you just continue to keep that wall up there. You're not doing yourself a service. So instead, if you can say, well, actually, I'm feeling pretty shitty right now. <laughs> and this is why. Uh, straight away, you, start, you are starting to peel those onion layers away and you're building trust because the other person then opens up as well. And uh, you're giving them permission to, to, be, to enter the conversation at a new, more honest level. Does that make sense? Just write MS in the chat if that makes sense. That being, making yourself vulnerable. So, so just think about where, where in the next week do you think yeah, good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you get that. Where do you think you could make yourself more vulnerable? How could you? What could an act of vulnerability be that that isn't natural or or might be? You know, we talk about a change of habit. Could be a change of habit for you. Is it how you relate to someone at work? You know. You know, Bernadette. Could it could it be saying to someone at work, "I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I need you to do this for me." Um, just, uh, just, yeah. Think about how you could, how you could embrace vulnerability as a strength, because that's that's actually what it is. It, it is a strength, being able to say it as it is. Just entering the chat, whatever comes up for you. Yeah. Letting people know how you feel. Exactly, Bernadette. And notice how you feel when you do that. And I understand that things might not be done to your level, but that actually doesn't really matter. The thing about vulnerability, when we make it about ourselves, so instead of, it's not about finger pointing and saying, oh, you're not doing enough, you need to do more. It's more about, I feel blank, whatever that is. This is how I'm feeling right now. Uh, and when you bring it back to yourself, that's being vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable and you're exposing how you really feel, uh, that invites others in and they want to help you at that point. Yeah, that's right. Uh, focusing on finance at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Are you? Yeah. So seeing seeing your position, seeing where you're at, um, and how motivating is that going to be to make sure that you ask for the full value for your program, right? That's important. Otherwise, we're doing we're entering into the uh, uh, you know the law of exchange, criminal exchange, uh, to honor your vulnerability by giving yourself dedicated time and space to process and reflect. Yeah. Talking to your inner self voice, Amanda Jane, yeah. Reaching out to your peers, making a strategy to execute the next steps, putting vision first and dedication to work. Yeah, that's a great point that you raise actually. Uh, when, we, when we've got a strong vision and we put that out there, all this other stuff, what we're talking about here is strategy. These are strategies. Uh, the vision makes the strategy, the execution of the strategy a whole lot easier. So, uh, you know, um, all of you have great visions, but think about 
the cost of allowing lack of trust or lack of discipline to potentially undermine the success of realizing that vision. And you go, that's crazy for, for just a, a slight change in behavior that I, that I put at risk this grand dream that I've got. Uh, that's, you know, that's a no brainer. I'm just not gonna do that. So allow the vision to be the thing that pushes you, not you. It's not an act of force. It's actually an act of um, energy, if you like. It's not something you have to force. It's just something that uh, a vision will pull you forward. So allow the vision to be uh, the dominant focus and the, the thing that best determines your behavior so that you don't become uh, you know, a self-saboteur because uh, that would be crazy. All right, so on that note, uh, this is what we're, uh, this is the assignment for the following week. It's, it's just to be aware of and master the two enemies of success, whether it's one or the other or both, um, being conscious of them and holding them in the forefront of your mind and going, where is lack of discipline uh, costing me? And or where is lack of trust costing me? Um, and you've outlined the cost today. So just you know, being aware of that. And then just focus on gaining more trust in yourself and others. And you've already written down you know, ways to do that. Um, and just notice how you feel accordingly. And uh, on the discipline level, just developing a good routine and new habits to increase discipline. But I would suggest don't go overboard, just focus on one at a time, but do it really well. And then feel free to check in in the WhatsApp group as well if you, uh, you, know, if you want to share how you're going, because all of that helps build, uh, it helps motivate everyone else to know that we're all doing this together. And I'm doing this with, with you too. I'm uh, going to be embarking on my new financial management habit, uh, much the relief of my better half. And so, uh, yeah, think about how it helps everyone else around you as well. So how are we going for time? I think, yeah, we're just about to wind up. What I'm going to do is I'll just uh, stop the share. Let's just quickly go around the room and just if you could share just your biggest takeaway. What was your biggest insight from today? The thing that's going to, um, that for you will make the biggest difference uh, to your life going forward. And I'm just going to start in the order that I'm seeing you. So are you, I'm going to start with you. What's your, your biggest uh, takeaway from today? Can Thank you speak? You yeah, I can speak, I think. <laughs> um, my biggest takeaway is um, departing from last week's session, which is going deeper into my vision, which is creating a home. And in that is, yeah the inner home and the home that I saw especially today as I'm focusing mostly on the finance issue and seeing like the home I'm creating is this and also related to my story and who, yeah who is there at home and that's the power you know the, the feminine who receives who nurture who you know stand at the back but then noticing my story being born, it's coming back again to the, you know, the core belief that I am a woman and where I'm born, the story is woman that doesn't have right, doesn't have any voice and choice. And that played and I'm just watching it, like, what am I claiming? What am I allowing myself to have money wise? What am I allowing myself to have in, even to stand up, to, uh, to lead, to market myself? Uh, and just noticing how it plays, what am I allowing, what power, and then just noticing like, wow, and this other force of in my home, that masculine energy of <clears throat> I can take care, I can hold space, I can stand grounded, being in my power, be heard without having to, you know, then this reflected to the power of the man in my dad who destroys who roar, and this is me noticing my voice as I'm roaring yesterday, who roar and hurt, who kill people. Um, yeah, what kind of energy, if I'm going to stand in my power and I'm bringing that, what do I want? What kind of voice, what kind of power do I want to have? And if I'm 
having um, inviting money and, and, and if I'm accepting my power to stand up there in my confidence and my power, uh, yeah, what do I want to provide them? And I'm just listing and noticing like, yeah, I want to give this also money and abundance, you know, to give and to provide the people in my in, in my hometown, in my village, just give that and support my, my children in the village scholarship programs is like, fuck, I have so much money in my home. Guys can come in and you need this and you need medicines at home. I want to give that without being worried. And before also noticing like my brothers, my sisters, everyone who works in my village come back whenever there are ceremonies, you know, you have to give because the people in the village don't have money. They don't have work. It's the driest uh, areas in Bali. People have no jobs and the farms are dry the whole year except in the rainy seasons. We only have rain, so maybe two months in a year. So different from other parts of Bali. We don't have money. And we'll be like, my brother's like, ah, they only see us because of their money. If we don't, if, if we don't have money, we don't dare to come to the village because like how embarrassed we would be coming home but have no money to give. They're like, okay, I'm ready to claim that. I'm ready to invite money in because I'm just gonna provide that because it's, I'm not, then I'm, I'm, I'm supported. I feel safe to trust myself to step up, to have money coming in because I'm just gonna be so joyful and delighted to provide to others as well. And uh, yeah, just <laughs> so powerful seeing what have I not been claiming? Mm-hmm. What am, you know, what am I been afraid? You know, the, con- the consequence of taking care and that is gonna make me burn out. But no, if I'm staying grounded to my vision of who I am, feeling safe in my home, at what my home is providing, but it's never ending because I'm taking care of myself, coming from a place of joy and giving, then I'm well cared of in my caring of other people. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, Ayub. Thank you for that. That's, uh, that's very powerful, having that realisation. And talking about energy, uh, masculine energy, as women, we have masculine energy and feminine energy, and we can draw on both. And so I'm going to uh, draw on that masculine energy to really create accountability uh, in my life towards money. And I think that probably accounts applies to you too, are you? The... Uh, keeping accountable, yeah. So you've got the, the the feminine energy of the nurturer, yeah, wanting to provide for family, but that has to be underpinned by that masculine structure of yeah, having good accountability in place. All right, thanks for that, Ayu. Uh, Bernadette, over to you. What's been your big takeaway? Um, I think it's more of uh, something I want, want to test as I go forward with the week because like there are times when I, I feel uncomfortable and what I've just identified like as an adult is that it comes from anxiety, but then I don't always know where the anxiety is coming from, but it just, I, I think I always ignored the fact that it could be anxiety and then responded to whatever was triggering me at that time, instead of just sitting with it, feeling it and saying, this is anxiety. And that's why I feel this way, you know? So if it was, you know, I don't even know, like saying something to someone that uh, otherwise I might not have, you know, if I knew that it was coming from a place of anxiety. So now like going forward, um, some of it is around giving my energy to people that I really shouldn't anymore, you know? Mm. So, and sometimes I find myself doing that out of anxiety, but it could be loneliness or just too much downtime. And I, I think I want to go forward the week thinking, all right, when I feel that way again, is it a trust issue or is it a discipline issue? Because giving my energy away is a discipline issue. If I don't stop doing that, I get into that habit of doing it all the time and not thinking about it first. So I, I'm curious to see when I feel it, if it can be solved by one or the other of these, you know, yeah. it's more of an experiment. Yeah. And I don't know if it will, but I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, the two can be very intertwined. So, and a lack of discipline can create lack of trust as well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, the, mm-hmm. yeah, one can create the other. Um, so, what's worth doing is probably going, what's the fear behind that? There's always fear behind something that doesn't feel right, right. doesn't serve you. Yeah. Like, what, what am I mm-hmm. afraid of exactly? Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you, can, you can almost go, okay, what am I afraid of? 
Um, and then what's the fear behind that? And what's the fear behind that? You know, you can actually take mm -hmm. it to a, yeah. a deeper level. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick pers personal example. So, and the way I'm thinking it through is in um, relationships. So I, I have been dating and, and there was a man that I was dating who I had fun with when I was with them, but I know it's not my future, but I kept on going back to it because I had nothing else to do or I, I didn't want to be by myself. And I thought, I have to stop because I have no intention of this being anything that's long term. So I had to stop giving my energy, but it's cut from the fear of being alone, which is, yeah. has always been from a kid. You know, that's what yeah. the fear was. So, and then some of it is, well, did I not like them because I didn't trust them? Or did, did I not trust them because I didn't like them? You know, it was like one or the other. So it's constant, but it's constantly in my head, you know, like I'm yeah. constantly thinking it through. But now I've gotten better about just sitting with it and saying, it's okay that I have nothing to do this weekend because I'm not going to waste my time and energy doing something that isn't going to be part of my life going forward. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's great. And that, that could be a good, uh, just a good uh, filter to put things through. Is this coming from fear or is it coming from mm -hmm. love? If it's mm -hmm. coming right. from fear, what could I do that uh, mm -hmm. would give, bring more love into my life? And that's right. just usually right. something, doing something that you love. And mm -hmm. that's right. going to attract the right person anyway. But yeah, mm -hmm. while you hang out with the wrong person, yeah, that's uh, yeah. So it's funny right. what happens. Uh, we it, our fear actually brings about what we're scared of. The fear actually isn't real. Um, the mm -hmm. the uh, that fear of being alone, you know, uh, and for me it might be our oh, fear of running out of money. If I continue on my current path, I'll probably guarantee I do run out of money. That's the irony. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so this is where we actually have to stop ourselves and go, okay, how do I break this habit of just wanting yeah, to right. be on my weekend? Because uh, this, mm -hmm. you're right, discipline does Because then I will end up alone. Yeah, yeah uh -huh, exactly. Right. exactly right. <laughs> so exactly what we have right. to do is be a little bit uh -huh. counterintuitive, um, but for our own mm -hmm. sake, go, okay, now I'm aware I've got to break this habit. It is a habit to be broken. And I'm going to do something else instead that's going to mm -hmm. give me a, a, a loving life where mm -hmm. I am loved. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, it all starts with ourselves. So if, if it's mm -hmm. something that honors you, Bernadette, that does what, um, mm -hmm. whatever that is, mm -hmm. it, might, it might even be something to do with the bee boxes or something, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. what, whatever, whatever gives you joy, do that instead and build that muscle. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes right. I can't believe it took 49 years to figure that out. You know, like it sounds so simple, yet I've spent my whole life doing the exact opposite. Well, so, I know, but that, that's, it's but the fact that you say that means you're now aware. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So Thanks. I'm great. glad that and I did. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it does take 49 years. It can take longer mm -hmm. than that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's mm -hmm. good that you, you can't believe that it took that long because that means you're right. not right. anymore. All right. right. So that's great. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. That's a that's a very important one. Um, Amanda Jane, what's been your biggest takeaway? Well, it's quite emotional actually for me. Um, mastering new habits, and I also like Bernadette. I've had a lot of anxiety, and you know, running out of money. And I did rent the house, and uh, you know, I didn't make a lot of money, but I came at it with something. But I've been spending like a lot of money and I, I caught up with a new friend and I've been giving energy to people that don't deserve my energy. Not that they're bad people, but they're real takers. They've got money. They always want to go to fancy places. And I've been doing it. And I'm like, Amanda, what am I doing? And, you know, I don't see these people in my future either. They always talk about the same stuff the energy drainers and I'm like why how did I get back here then I beat myself up is it because I feel alone or I had a team you know a web guy he was he talked a big talk I had a social media girl and I think they kind of let me down last week and I was just like is everyone just flaky like I'm, I'm just I um so I've got to stop that and go no okay it's all okay instead of going down that spiral because I noticed I'm very high in my energy, but I got taken down by a bit of them. One said she was sick and she broke her phone and, and I knew they were lying and I I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's really been good for me to stay curious, uh, just very disciplined, just trust. 
you know, I've never been let down by the universe before. I've never been living on the streets and, but, you know, I left home at 13, but it's this thing because I always had a lot of money. And like you said before, I never thought it would ever run out. That's why I think I spend abundantly. And right now I can't do that. And I need to teach myself the, the budget. Like I used to have a mentor years ago and she made me write that down daily because she's like, you live a large life and you spend a lot of money, Amanda. Mm -hmm. And because of my food, it's all organic because of the way I eat, my massage, my therapies and, and other things. And I just have to pull some of that back. It's all not necessary. I did it in Thailand, pulled it back. And because you're in Bali, you think it's cheap and it actually is not right now here. And it's not, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. And this is something that's in this mental frame of mine. And I have to yeah, be vigilant on my goal and my dream, my vision. Because once I keep with my vision, I stay disciplined and I trust that at the end of it, I will, you know, be standing in my power and, you know, in growth and contribution and, and, and giving to others and also loving myself at the same time. But, yeah. It is a wake-up call, isn't it? <laughs> All Oof. right. Yeah. We'll, we'll really support each other, Amanda Jane. Yeah. 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 I've, I've always, and I dangerously cloaked my spending as generosity. That's quite sick. So you don't want to do that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, we don't want to con no, ourselves I anymore. All that. Yeah. I used to give it away, go pay for everyone, go to dinner with 10 girls, I'll pay lunch. That used yeah. to be the only time I stopped that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. Well, well we're, I, I realise this in myself, we're unwittingly self-sabotaging, but we can mask it as something else like I did. Oh, aren't I generous, you know? So uh, in a funny way, it's keeping ourselves small. So we have to be ruthlessly honest with ourselves and go, listen, it's the vision that's at stake. It's not about me. I have this vision. I know my path, it's my path to fulfillment. I know ultimately it's going to, what is going to fulfill me more than money, more than a partner, more than anything else. It's this, because uh, fulfillment always comes from within. But the irony is by being disciplined and, uh, and trusting where appropriate, that's where the relationships happen and the money flows in and all of that. So, yeah, we have to abide by the law first. <laughs> so uh, thanks for that, AJ. Um, and that's good that it's been a, a bit emotional because that probably means you're, you've, you've had, you're getting some kind of insight. And so now it is just about uh, attending to the habit of it. Um, Cheryl, over to you. What's been the big insight for you or your biggest takeaway? Clicking on the mute uh, symbol instead of the uh, button. Um, so for me, it was interesting that um, I couldn't think of anything related to lack of trust. And currently in my current life, and, and that's when I say my current life, the last, the, you know, the last number of years. Um, but previously, there was a lot. So that must mean to me that there's been a big growth. Yeah pattern since you know and, and I equate like the time in my life from a loss of dawn to so I think that that has you know um he has cultivated a change in me and that's sustained through to today which is which is wonderful I mean I, I think that's that's really really good um lots of things to work on and lack of discipline right yeah <laughs> and just suck my energy <laughs> All right. Well, well, one habit at a time, uh, yeah. because then, then if you focus on one, it means you're taking it seriously and you give yourself the best possible chance and then just work through it methodically. All right. Well, um, I'm with you guys on all of this. Uh, I'm going to be working on my habit. Uh, and I'm actually excited about it because I realise actually how much it's been affecting my emotional state on a kind of subterranean level. And, um, and I think that's what happens when there are these unresolved pieces of ourselves. So, but it's just good to know that through simple action, we can actually turn things around. It doesn't, we build it up in our minds to be huge, but actually it's not. <laughs> it's just about becoming aware of it and taking the appropriate action. So um, here's to us doing that, uh, committing to ourselves. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you next week's, what, what's next week's law? Oh, I'll post it in the WhatsApp. It just skips my mind right now, but, um, 
uh, no doubt it'll be an interesting one. So have a great week. Feel free to post in the WhatsApp how you're going or if you've got any questions or whatever, um, that's your space. And uh, have a great week. See you, see you next week. Bye.